Red flags are flying on Tiananmen Square, ahead of the most important event on China's political calendar. This year's National People's Congress takes on a special significance, as it coincides with the centenary of the founding of the Communist Party. It's been a big year for China, the only major economy to grow during the pandemic. Delegates are expected to approve its five-year plan, a blueprint to expand the middle class, which already counts 400 million people. Its quick rebound from the coronavirus means China could unseat America as the world's largest economy by 2030. So um, sort of economic nerds are going to be looking much more at where the economy is in terms of momentum through 2021 rather than year over year comparison. But it's going to be, um, you know, it's good growth um, that they'll get, probably around seven or eight percent would be my guess. President Xi Jinping will aim to keep the focus on national pride, innovation and self-sufficiency. In the run-up to the Congress, he launched a major propaganda campaign to claim poverty in rural China was over. The Congress will also move to quash any criticism of the Communist Party. China wants to tighten its grip further in Hong Kong. The high-profile trials of Hong Kong democracy activists has brought attention to Beijing's crackdown in the territory. It wants to ensure Hong Kong is firmly under the control of what the party calls Chinese patriots. We've always seen some very difficult days recently in Hong Kong. And over the past few months, we've seen that again and again, the NPC, that Beijing has come in to basically set the rules in Hong Kong, change the laws, give the direction. And I think it will be very, all eyes will be there to see, is the NPC at this sitting going to be promulgating more laws which are going to have a direct impact in Hong Kong and reducing the role of Hong Kong's uh, Hong Kong people running Hong Kong. The Congress also gives an insight into China's defence budget. Last year, military spending fell to its lowest in three decades. Rising international tensions, especially over Taiwan, but also over the South China Sea, could see the Congress approving more money for the armed forces this year. Joining us is journalist Ryan Ho Kilpatrick. Ryan, you're currently in Taiwan, but we reached out to you because you do a lot of reporting from Hong Kong. And there are a lot of expectations that Beijing will make some announcements at this year's Congress that will tighten its grip on Hong Kong. What are you hearing? Yes, the National People's Congress is expected to pass a package of reforms that will drastically overhaul the way elections are run in Hong Kong. The director of the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office, Xiao Baolong, uh, signaled as much just days ago during a central government symposium when he uh, called for a system of patriots ruling Hong Kong. And uh, this was immediately backed up by the local government there. And the Secretary for Security, Eric Zhang, uh, he said to quote what used to be the quiet part out loud when he clarified that patriots meant people who love the Communist Party. So this can mean any number of things, such as eliminating the role of district councillors. Uh, last year, of course, there was a... Um, landslide victory for pro-democracy candidates in the district council elections, or um, uh, making any um, candidates for legislative council, the legislature, pass through a, a vetting process through um, a committee that is already stacked with uh, pro-Beijing loyalists, but could become even more so, as uh, Beijing makes it clear that it'll brook absolutely no dissent in the political process in Hong Kong. Now, China under Xi Jinping has really pumped up the nationalism. And as the report mentioned, the country's had a relatively good 12 months compared to many other parts of the world. Give us a sense of the tone of the Communist Party going into this Congress. Yeah, uh, China is certainly riding a, a wave at the moment. Um, the, uh, nationalism is um, reaching a, pe a fever pitch there. Of course, um, this year, 2021, marks the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese Communist Party. And they have a set of uh, centenary goals that they want to meet this year, including uh, uh, eliminating poverty nationwide, which uh, Xi Jinping has claimed to have uh, just done recently. And, um, and also uh, retaking Taiwan, unifying it with the mainland. And they view uh, this current uh, juncture in um, world politics as sort of a turning of the tide. Xi Jinping said just recently in a, in a leaked speech that the East is rising while the West is falling. They view this as a strategic moment to, to seize the momentum. And um, to realize these goals are um, increasing the military spending yet again this year, um, expected to surpass last year's increase of 6.6%, uh, 
in spite of the economic damage done by the coronavirus pandemic. And of, uh, of course, Taiwan is alert to this threat and has increased its military budget again this year uh, for the second time after a decade of decline. So we're seeing um, an arms race in uh, East and Southeast Asia intensify as uh, China uh, increases its nationalist and aggressive military posturing. Brian Ho, Kilpatrick, thank you so much for joining us.